All right, let's dive on into our next one. The statement is, consider the charging capacitor in problem 7.34. A, find the electric and magnetic fields in the gap as functions of the distance s from the axis and time t, assuming the charge at zero is at, assuming the charge is zero at t equals zero. B, find the energy density um, uem and a pointing vector s in the gap. Note that especially the direction of s, check that the continuity equation for energy is satisfied. C, determine the total energy in the gap as a function of time. Calculate the total power flowing into the gap by integrating the pointing vector over the appropriate surface. Check that the power input is equal to the rate of increase of energy in the gap, pointing theorem in the case of W equals zero, because there's no charge in the gap. If you're worried about the fringing fields, do it for a volume of radius B less than A well inside the gap. All right, so let's go uh, look at our situation. We have a uh, cylinder here that's cut in half or wire cut in half separated by distance w with plus sigma on one side minus sigma on the other current running from left to right radius a okay this we really tackled back in chapter seven as the question states what we need to know is the pointing vector okay so that we saw that last question we also know we also need to know that the total energy in the em field e and m field per unit volume is given by u is equal to one half epsilon e squared plus one over mu naught b squared and the continuity equation for the energy states that the partial view with respect to t is equal to the negative divergence of s. We've seen that before for the charge. Now we see it for the energy. All right. Let's go ahead and dive on in. The electric field in the gap is E equals sigma over epsilon. Okay. So sigma here is just Q over pi A squared. Run that through. And we see that QT is equal to I times T. So E of T is equal to IT over pi epsilon naught A squared Z hat. And then Ampere's law with Maxwell's correction, so Maxwell Ampere law, is the curl of B, well, clearly in the gap, we don't have any current density, so J goes to zero. E, the derivative of E, um, is what we have. So uh, what we need to do is take the integral of both sides, and we see that invoking Stokes' theorem allows us to write this um, surface integral as a line integral. And then we see on the right-hand side, um, we can push the integral through to the uh, E term only. So that gives us some kind of mag or electric flux. And the closed line integral of this gives us a, uh, uh, the field at the spot gives us a two pi S of so the circumference of a circle. Uh, makes sense. And then what we see throughout that, uh, cause we're looking at a um, DL, which is at S and then we go through zero to two pi for phi. All right, but anyways, um, so circumference there, and then the electric field gives us a flux of pi s squared. So we get a factor of pi s canceling on both sides. And then we're left with b of s of t is equal to mu naught epsilon naught over s, uh, and then divided by two is equal to the partial of e with respect to t in the phi hat direction. All right, so if we go ahead and take the derivative with respect to t of e, what we get is i over pi epsilon a squared, and we see that d epsilons cancel. So we get what we kind of expect, which is mu naught i s over two pi a squared in the fiat direction. All right, nice to see consistency. Now b, um, what we want to do now is find the energy using these fields. So we square the e field and we square the b field Okay, which recall that the square is that e dot b, or excuse me, e dot e and b dot e, excuse me, b dot b. So the square is just the dot product with each other. Once we do that, we have a common i squared, and then we have um, a lot of other common factors, pi squared and a, uh, yeah, and then a squared squared. So we factor all that out. We see on the inside that the epsilons cancel, um, and we see that the mu naught cancels for the b field but what we need to do to find a common um yeah to find things commonly is to uh write to factor out a mu naught what we do is multiply by mu naught over mu naught on the e field term so what we see here is t squared over epsilon naught mu naught plus uh s squared over two squared uh we keep it all squared for a reason um and then here we see that uh, epsilon naught mu naught is equal to one over c squared. 
So we can factor all this into a square form, and we see that uh, UEM is equal to mu naught I squared over 2 pi squared A to the fourth times C uh, T squared plus S over 2 squared. All right, cool. Now, in a similar vein, what we need to do is find the pointing vector, uh, which is just the cross product of E and B divided by mu naught. And so we see that we can factor out um, the E constants and the B constants, or left with Z cross phi. Remember what I said about the directionality of the cross products? We know that phi cross Z gives us S, so we can use the anti uh, commutivity of the cross product to put the negative sign in there. Um, all right, cool enough. Combine everything that we need, and we see that we get I squared T over 2 pi squared epsilon A to the fourth S. S hat, negative, of course. Reason why? Well, if we take the time derivative of the density, UM, UEM, and the negative divergence of S, well, let's see if they equal. So we see that the time derivative gives us uh, a 2C squared T, because we just bring the power rule down. That cancels the 2 in the denominator. Negative divergence, of course, this is only in the S direction, so we take the S derivatives, and we see the negative signs cancel. We get a 1 half canceling with the 2 canceling with the twos um, from the S's. So uh, yeah, what we see here is some unique stuff and then we just push on through and we're still trying to see if they actually equal one another. Let's keep canceling down. Um, yep, yep, yep. So one over S, excuse me, that one over two should be a one over S. So the S cancels and the two cancels. Okay, typo there in the parentheses by the bracket. Okay, but simplifying this down, we sub back in what the c squared was, which is 1 over epsilon naught mu naught, so the mu naughts on the left-hand side cancel, and we can simplify down to the uh, right-hand side. And once we combine everything, we see that we're left with i squared t over pi squared epsilon naught a to the fourth on both sides, and we're good to go. The continuity equation is satisfied. And then c for the surface of the gap is at radius b, so if we try to find the total in the gap, the total energy, not just the density, we see that the energy em is equal to, well, 0 to w, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to b, and moving this forward, uh, well, of course, if we're squaring everything and all that kind of stuff, well, what we found from U little um, uh, we can just plug it in, pull out the commons, uh, common factors, or the constants, rather, Use Fubini's theorem to split everything up. And then, uh, yeah, let it rock and roll all day. Um, we can't split up anything with the CT because it's multiplied by S. But although, otherwise, we see everything we need to. 0 to W goes to W. 0 to 2 pi goes to 2 pi, which cancels out the factor with the constant terms. And now we distribute the S in so that we can integrate accordingly. We use power rule on both of them. Then go from 0 to B. Once we simplify this all down after cancellations, we get a uh, b squared plus b over four b to the fourth over eight, and uh, yeah, then we can factor out a b squared, and we're left with the total energy in the gap of mu naught w i squared b squared over two pi a to the fourth times c t squared plus b squared over eight, and then for the p n, what we need to do is take the negative um, s dot d a. Okay. Again, this happens to do with the direction of S with reference to dA uh, that we're trying to face. And so uh, pushing that in, the negative gives us the, uh, to do, yeah, the negative from the, no, that the negative comes from the continuity equation. Uh, so yeah, we go ahead and plug it all in and we just chug it through. And you see, we get the integral of I, the integrals yield I squared WT B squared over pi epsilon naught A to the fourth. If we take the time derivative of big UEM, we see that they are equal to one another, so it holds true once again, and we're good to go.